Welcome back to the channel, my name's Ben, this is BD Performance and today we're going to be building a Focus ST225 engine. Now this one in particular um, is going to be, it's a lined block um, with standard rods and pistons um, and a refurbished cylinder head. So the block's been already been to the machine shop, it's had the liners installed, uh, it's come back to us, it's been through our cleaning process, it's all been painted. Um, it's still masked up, we're going to leave that for now, it'll just stop any dirt and any, or dust getting um, into the cylinders while we prepare all the rest of the parts uh, for the build. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to prepare the standard pistons, we're going to clean them up, get them ready for the new rings to be installed once we've, uh, once we've gapped them up. Um, and yeah, keep watching, should be fun. Right, we've got the standard original rods and pistons cleaned up stripped of the old rings thrown them in the bin and um, all laid out in a grid is what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to drop the piston rings into each individual cylinder measure the gaps and adjust them accordingly so it's going to be super important that we keep the the rings that we've measured in in each specific cylinder in order so that they go back into the same cylinder that the gaps have been measured to. So get on with that. Feel the gauge. Drop the ring in and we just turn it slowly. Then I use piston with a ring attached and that will just help you drop that ring down nice and even and far enough down the bore for you to get an accurate measurement. So that one there is a little bit tight. It's too, I can't get the, the feeler gauge that is the correct measurement into that gap. So we're gonna have to get that out now. Gonna have to file the ring to, to increase that opening and then we'll put it back in, we'll measure again. We'll keep doing that until we get the gap right. And then we'll move on to the second ring in that uh, piston and then in turn we'll go along all the cylinders until we're all done uh, and then we'll be ready to Put the crank in and then we'll drop the pistons in. When you've got your ring gap just right, you'll be able to drop the feeler gauge in and just slide it through with a little bit of resistance and your rings, both either side of the ring, won't move at all. You can do anything like this at home and you're not going to have a proper ring file, so you can do it with a nice little file, uh, nothing too um, too aggressive. You just want to make sure that you get your ring and your file from the outside in like that so that there's no risk of you leaving any burrs sticking out that will cause catastrophic damage to the, the cylinder wall. So ring gap's done, we're going to drop the crank in now. This particular crank is the uh, is the original crank out of the vehicle. This particular one came in with just a cracked liner, so all the bottom end essentially was, was undamaged, but we've sent it away. We've just had the, the, uh, the bearing journals polished up as a precaution just to make sure that there was no damage, but they were perfectly fine. It's polished up, so we've got a set of uh, new King, um, mains bearings here, we've got new bolts and everything else ready to rock but we're going to start by dropping the crank in and then we'll start assembling the pistons and we'll drop the pistons and rods in one at a time.
we make sure we get plenty of lube on all these new bearings. We uh, we use Miller's assembly lube. Taking a notice of this bottle, I just kept this bottle just because I like the because uh, I like the squirty bit. But we use the Miller's stuff. We just make sure we get, we get plenty on there, and we'll uh, we'll spread it around. So I've just got the other half of the main bearing set and I'm going to drop these on to the cradle. Now before we drop this cradle onto the block to hold the crankshaft in place, we need to um, apply some sealant. Now on the, we use Loctite 518 on this one, it's an anaerobic flange sealant. And basically that means that anything that spills over internally into the engine will get washed away by the oil. Uh, yeah, by the oil. That's really important because you don't want big lumps of, um, of silicon or RTV type sealant floating around in your oil and blocking up galleries and stuff like that. So. I go round both sides of any bolt holes just so that any oil that if it does pass this surface if you've only sealed for example along the outside edge you can get oil passing up through the bolt holes basically. If anyone wants any bathrooms doing don't ask me. Um, more lube on these bearings. Being careful not to damage any of the bearing journals or anything like that. We just lower the cradle on nice and slow, get it all lined up and in place. And we'll start dropping the, uh, the main set of bolts in, ready to start talking up. So I'm just going to talk uh, these main uh, bearing bolts down now. This particular particular engine, there's a, there's a three stage torque setting. Um, on these bolts, so, uh, two different. You, you do them all to two different settings, followed by um, a, a 90 degree turn, essentially at the end. Now, obviously, these kind of settings are all going to vary by what engine you're working on. So just make sure you check the the specifics for the engine you're working on at that particular time. Also, the pattern in which you do so. Now. They're all going to be very similar in that you start in the middle and you work your way outwards in an even pattern. So again, just make sure you uh, you check that pattern along with the torque settings before you crack on and just wang them in. <laughs> I've been around all the bolts at 20 newton meters. I've been back round in the correct pattern at 45 newton meters. Now before I do the 90 degrees to finish these off. I've got to install this, uh, the, the, the outside ring of smaller bolts, um, which there's uh, 12 of them. These ones get torqued to 24 newton meters. I'll then have to do these five little ones down here to 17 newton meters, and then I'll do the 90 degrees on the mains bolts, and that'll be this 
bottom end or the crank should I say ready for uh, but the bottom end turned over ready to start dropping some rods and pistons in. The crank's in, just making sure that obviously it just turns nice and freely. Um, that'll sort of confirm to you whether you know that you've got the right size bearings and everything um, before we start putting the pistons in. Now, I grabbed the first one, it's all been cleaned up, there's no rings on it. Um, these are the old bolts, they're always replaced, they're stretch bolts, but I left them in for now because these um, caps, I don't know what you can see there, they're not even so that you know, one cap will only fit this rod this, that's only true in the um, original rods but you need to keep these um to this to the rod so i've left all that in i left the old bearings in and everything just to make sure that nothing got damaged while they were all hanging around but i'm going to take them out now throw them away i'm going to put some new bearings in plenty of uh, build lube on there and then we'll uh, we'll start dropping them in and we've got a really nice um, installation tool here which is specific to the size of this bore which is 83 mil that's a standard bore size in this engine you can get them in all sorts of sizes we've only got a couple of different ones that we use regularly it's just much easier than the normal old-fashioned um, universal spring compressors that you had to wind in by hand and they sort of never really worked that well and you end up like causing damage to the uh, to the rings when they, when they drop past the uh, the edge of the bore so uh, captain jack's just landed look Yep, they look straight to me. With which eye? Uh, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get these nice and central because there are no locating dowels on these. start from the bottom up you need to install all of the rings and have all the ring gaps staggered now if you're using a set of um, aftermarket or forged internals normally in the box you'll get a sheet which will actually give you a, a proper diagram of exactly where each ring gap will go um, but really important that you don't get all the ring gaps along because obviously you'll get you'll get oil and compression path compression compression passing up and we definitely don't want that also you can get a piston ring installation tool but to be honest with you i can't stand them so i'm gonna stick with my hands New rings, new bearings, again, plenty of lube. Spread it round. We'll dip this piston, just get that nice and lubed up. Just let the majority spill, just so we're not drowning it. And then we can go, we can stick it through our special tool. Now, you just gotta watch. You've gotta kind of feed it in so that you're not catching any of the rings if you wiggle it about. Just get it, he says. Dead easy this is. <laughs> oh, I'm getting camera shy now, Lee, you're getting nervous. What are you doing to me? So you just drop it in like that, easy. And then <clears throat> you see where the rod sits on the gudgeon pin. Just try and line that up nice and central 
so that the rod can drop down um, into the crank without it, you know, it will catch the crank. If you, if you try and drop it in like that, it'll catch the crank and you'll end up trying to poke something from underneath to try and straighten it out. So get that nice and central. Put it back on your rings because you've just knocked it off like an idiot. You know you're really good at this, Ben. You should make a video on building an engine. Definitely. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Some of the forge internals and that will have uh, will have an arrow pointing towards the front end of the engine or you know, where the timing belt will be. Um, some of them will have um, different sized valve pockets but basically these standard ones they've only got valve reliefs on the well on one side and that is the inlet side of the engine so the front side or the side that Lee is standing on which is the thrust side of the engine you've just got to make sure that these uh, valve pockets are on the front before we drop them in make sure they're the right way try and line that up centrally in the crank and also if we get the tool nice and flat on the block we can look at the, the valve reliefs and try and get a nice straight line along the engine we know the con rod's going to be pointing the right way to drop down into the crank we've lined the um the rod on the gudgeon pin so hopefully it should drop in nice and easy sometimes you'll have to just jiggle it about a bit and um, to allow it to drop through that crank but hopefully this should fall straight in What are you doing to me, Lee? Oh. My bad. Right. Ready? Well, look at that. Straight in. Told you it goes straight in, didn't I? <coughs> and then, you just need to stick. Stick an hand in underneath and line that up. Just drop that onto the crank. I mean, you could, you could flip the engine over and torque it up individually. It's a lot of turning around, which everyone has different ways of doing it. Another way you could do it is to have this engine at a, like a 45 degree angle. The only trouble with that is the con rod tends to want to drop onto the side of the uh, of the liner. So I prefer to put it in like that. It's not much of a struggle just to hold the torque wrench upside down to tighten the bottom end up so and it saves us a lot of uh, messing about turning the engine over and lots of times. Just because Lee's awkward and he can't hold his super duper stabilised gimbal upside down I'm going to have to turn it over just to, uh, so that we can show you the torquing of this first rod. I'm going to have to refer to him manually, it's been that long since I did stand con rods, I'm going to have to uh, check the torque settings, bear with me. Uh, close, 30, 90. <laughs> so Lee's got the camera out again and everything's to oh no look at that then Out. 
I've decided, I think overall, it's probably easier just to turn the engine over to talk them up. For all of the three seconds it takes. Uh, right, new O-rings on this mating surface before the sump goes on. You don't want to miss them out, for sure. You don't want to fit the old ones if there's any kind of damage, misshapen, anything whatsoever. If, if any of them are no good, you need new ones because you will have oil pressure problems and you will ruin your newly built motor. We've seen it before plenty of times, especially when people fit the sumps with um, RTV silicon gasket. When you bolt it down, the gasket actually pushes the O-rings out of place. And within days or weeks, depending on how much the car's used, you've got a knocking brand new motor. So definitely every time new seals uh, and the same um, anaerobic flange sealant on that sump that you've used on this cradle and that we'll use later on on the rock cover. Uh, pick up next, it's got a gauze filter in here so if you've had any issues with your motor in terms of uh, bearing failure or anything like that that might involve there being any kind of metal filings in your, in your engine you need to clean this really well. If you can't, if you've got no access to any equipment that's going to clean this to a level that's going to be, you know, that you're going to be 100% certain that there's nothing left, just buy a new one. It just isn't worth it. So, just stick this in, we'll get that bolted up, and we're nearly ready for the sump. Now, I mentioned earlier about when you're uh, when you're putting the anaerobic flange sealant on um, on this on the sump. If you look here, like I said, we go around the inside. Now, you can you can imagine this sump is obviously full of oil, and you're onto the external of the engine here now. And if you put a flange sealant on the outside edge of the bolt rather than the inside, any oil that manages to get between these two surfaces is just going to come out past the heads of them bolts. So. Just make sure that your sealant always goes around the inside of these bolt holes. Right, it's head time. Um, got a new genuine gasket here ready to go on. Got a set of new bolts ready to go. Um, we'll drop the head on. We'll show you roughly the the pattern. Um, again, like the bottom end, it's a three stage torquing process on this, um, with the final one being um, a degree measurement. Um, but like any, you know, obviously that's always going to vary between the engine you're working on. So I won't give you all the specifics so that you don't end up using the wrong settings for your car. Just check um, the manufacturer's specifications for the, uh, the torque settings and also the torque pattern for your particular engine. But let's get this head on. If you've got your cams out and the pulleys are still attached, like these ones, a couple of bits to remember before you put the cams back in. This pipe, this engine mount bracket, you've got to put them in first. Otherwise, you'll either be taking them back off um, or you will be pulling 
the pulleys <clears throat> the pulleys back off to get them in afterwards so stick them on first save yourself a load of hassle right we're ready to drop the cap the cams in loads of lube stick a new cam seal on and slide it right down over the cam if you've still got the pulley on um, the pulley's marked with intake and exhaust sometimes like I don't know if you can see on this one they do corrode a bit on the face so you won't be able to make out the writing if that's the case um, the the trigger end the trigger wheel end of the cams um, the cutouts are slightly different so the trigger wheels themselves will only fit on each specific cam and they're labelled inside with in for the intake and X for the exhaust so just make sure you're putting the, the right cam in the right place so <clears throat> And also, there's a little, uh, there's a mark where the timing's set. That is providing this cam, uh, the pulley, sorry, um, hasn't been loosened off because these the, these aren't keyed. So as long as that pulley's never been touched, if you try and get that mark towards the top, when you come to inserting the timing tools, you should be somewhere near. Um, and then rocker cover, Loctite 518 anaerobic, um, like I've said before, just go round on the, the inner, the inside of the bolt holes so that you don't get any oil coming anywhere near the bolt holes and leaking up onto the rocker cover, leaving you a big mess. I thought I'd take this in moment to interrupt Ben really and what are the like biggest things that people fail at in terms of building these engines? I'm going to start it off with cams in the wrong side round, i.e. the inlet and exhaust and exhaust in the inlet side, that's one of the big ones that we've seen before isn't it? Uh, yeah. I know that you can't, if you've got the tool we can't make that mistake but if you haven't got the tool and they're just setting the timing off the plastic covers then, which we don't recommend in any way, shape or form, but that is definitely a mistake that people make, isn't it? What else have we got? <coughs> well, like I mentioned on the bottom end, probably the, the O-rings on, the sump O-rings and, pinching, and, yeah. o -rings and losing pinch. oil pressure. So we've pressure. got O-rings pinching, we've got <coughs> cams in the wrong way round, or even upside down as well then, 180 degrees upside down. That yeah, we have. We, we you, you, yeah. you can get them upside down. So the biggest thing is definitely to get a set of tools and get the genuine ones if you can. If you've got a beg, borrow, steal them. If you're going to decide to do this yourself, the another great big pitfall is definitely the anaerobic sealant, not using the black uh, silicon. Um, Certainly preparation is a huge thing as well, but and checking clearances because there's stuff that we haven't delved into here in terms of checking clearances of valves, checking the clearances against the shims and the buckets and the cylinder head, just stuff that you just couldn't go through in a video like this, could you Ben? Otherwise you'd make it like three hours long, wouldn't you? But is there anything else really pitfall wise other than taking your time? any other common faults that we've seen over the years oh uh oil pump gaskets and stuff pinching them the, <coughs> the seals on the cams and stuff making sure that they've got the spring inside it because if you're buying if you buy even when you buy genuine parts they can still be dislodged in 
in transport or, or missing just a bad part. So just check all the bits. If they don't look right, then check it against a photo online or give one of us a ring and just check that it is right. But it's certainly one of the biggest pitfalls is parts coming wrong or ill-fitting or people buying repo sets that uh, and by that I mean reproduction kind of sets that are meant to be for that engine but actually they're suitable for multiple engines aren't they Ben? Rather than just one specific. Yeah some of the kits are a bit more generic to the sort of Volvo B5254 engine that have different size um, different size pulleys so you get a mismatching set of camber seals and stuff so you'll end up with not everything you need to build the engine. Basically. It's not always the cheapest idea to buy the cheapest thing you can because you'll end up having to buy alternative parts so what we can really suggest is going to one of the tuners and buying a block mod kit off them or buying a seal kit off them. I bet you for the extra few pounds that you've spent then in terms of getting a repo set you probably won't have really well, you won't have lost anything, that's for sure. You definitely won't have lost any time because you make sure that, you know, whoever you get them off, whether it be SCC, Devil... <coughs> so if whoever you get it off, whether it be SCC, Devil Developments, um, Puma Speed, Puma Build, any of the big names, Collins Performance, you'll get the right bits in the kit and you'll save yourself time at the end of the day, won't you? But is there anything else that you can think of? <coughs> It's hard, isn't it, when you... Yeah. <laughs> we're both trying to think on the spot. But if Ben thinks of something else, then I'm sure he'll mention it um, throughout the video or towards the end of the video with anything else that we think of it for. But enjoy the rest of the video, guys, and sorry for the interruption. Get on with it now. <coughs> right. Um, sealant on the cover. Loads of build loop on there again. Um and new seals around the spark plug openings Right, we've got ourselves ready for the for the new belt to go on and for it to all be timed up. So we've put we've put a new water pump, we've put the oil pump back on with a new seal kit. We've got the new tensioner and the new idler out of the uh, timing belt kit. So we're just going to show you now how we lock it up and set the timing. So if you look on the side of the block here, you've got a little blank. Pull that out, and that's where we put our crank locking tool. I've already set the crank into the right place, so that should just drop straight in ish just need to move the crank ever so slightly so that that drops into place and we'll have the alignment <coughs> see there's a mark on the oil pump there's a mark on this pulley here if we move that forwards you'll see now with that pin in I drop that back and it locks it perfectly into place and then after that, we've got a cam locking tool that we install on the back end of the camshafts here. They drop in, screw in. Starting from the crankshaft first, if we get it over the crank pulley. You 
you need to make sure that you get this side from the crank to the inlet cam pulled really tight before you hook it over because the tensioner actually doesn't have any control over the tension of the belt on this side so you get that nice and tight and then carry on feeding it right round the exhaust cam round the water pump and onto the tensioner and then we've just got to tension it and we tension it if you watch this pointer just want to get that pointer nice and central and then you can lock off the bolt there are actually some alternative adjustments for this based on different climates how you make it looser or tighter in in hotter or colder climates but we just try and get it nice and central and just lock that off that's essentially that is it timed up we just need to remove the, the locking tool at the crank the locking tool at the cams we'll turn it over by hand make sure the tools fit back in and that'll be us done so i'm just going to turn it over by hand now two full rotations of the crank that'll get us back to the exact starting point just listening and feeling for any obstructions or funny noises along the way that turns nice no, uh, no funny sounds, nothing stopping it from turning, so we're all good on that, but as far as this video's concerned, that's us done. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. I hope it maybe it inspires some of you to even give your own engine builds a go at home. If there's any more information you need, if you ask questions down below, I'll try my best to help you out there. And if there's any uh, info you need on parts or anything like that, if you check out store.bdperformance.co.uk, We've got um, a basic engine build configurator on there, which will give you some ideas on some options in terms of engine builds and pricing uh, when it comes to forged internals or adding camshafts or anything like that. Uh, so if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't all, um, already and hit that bell icon to stay notified for all our future videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.